time for another experiment. Now, I've been thinking about recording in stereo, as you do, and um, it struck me that when we record in stereo, we almost always record in the horizontal plane. Now that makes complete sense, because most of the time we hear sounds that way. Unless you spend most of your life walking around like this, or you spend a lot of your time lying on your side, you hear left and right. You don't hear up and down. Um, so it makes sense to record that way. However, why not break the rules? I mean, we've been breaking the rules with recording for a very long time. You know, who listens to a snare drum with your ear four inches from the head? Certainly no one who cares about their hearing. Um, who listens to a guitar amp maybe a foot away from the speakers? No one. Um, but yet that's how we often record them. So why not break the rules again? Now we're going to record with an acoustic guitar because uh, it struck me um, a lot of instruments we kind of record... How do I explain this? Uh, we record at 90 degrees to... Let's, let's just use examples. So a piano, uh, if we have an upright piano there in front of me, we record at 90 degrees and that means the left, the low strings are over to the left, I don't know if this video is mirrored or not, but one side, and the high strings are over to the other, and as we play the strings, it moves across the stereo field. A drum kit, we mic from the top, 90 degrees, and that side of the drum kit is to one side, and that side is to the other. But with an acoustic guitar, we mic along the strings. So if the strings go across this way, we set the mics this way. I thought, what if we flip them that way? Now you do already get separation when you're recording acoustic guitar because most of the high let me just grab a guitar most of the high frequencies on an acoustic come from the neck most of the low frequencies come from the body so if you mic around the 12th fret sort of where the neck meets the body which is a fairly standard starting point at least um, one will focus one of your mics will focus on the higher strings the other will focus on the lower strings um, but what you don't get is that movement. So say, for example, on a piano, if we run our fingers from low to high, this isn't plugged in, so it's not going to make any sound, but just for the sake of demonstration, it's going to move across from left to right. On acoustic, it's not going to do that. It's going to remain static in the stereo field. I mean, if you're doing a quick chord, it's not going to matter, but if you're doing a slow, That'd be quite nice if it moved across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an XY standard horizontal setup first, around about the 12th fret. Uh, I'm going to use an XY configuration um, because we've got quite a small target to aim at. Uh, XY is like that. The two mics are at 90 degrees to each other and the capsules are both very close. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, the neck is sort of the strings is where we're aiming at so we've only got a small area to aim at so we can't use more spacious stereo techniques like ORTF or um, space pair things like that um, so we're going to do it XY in the horizontal plane first have a listen and then I'm going to flip it and we'll see how it sounds it might sound dreadful but you're not going to know unless we experiment Okay, now I'm going to flip it round into the vertical position and we'll do the same again. 
Just playing around a bit with the angles here, uh, originally they were just a, a classic 90 degree XY but um, low frequencies are less directional than high frequencies so I'm sort of just having to fiddle around a little bit um, to try and get the balance of, of left and right uh, across my ears. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's do it properly now. So this is the setup I sort of ended up with after playing around on the headphones, which is, I guess, a kind of hybrid somewhere between uh, the horizontal and the vertical plane. Um, without getting impractically close, it was really difficult to get any sort of stereo movement across the strings. Uh, the high strings, I mean high frequencies, are a lot more directional, so they weren't really the problem. I could get them over to one side, but the low frequencies the, from the low strings was much more difficult to get over to the other side, as uh, obviously low frequencies are, are less directional. Um, so what I ended up doing, I started with the XY, uh, and then I ended up um, moving the um, bottom uh, condenser, you can see there, uh, which is aimed at the um, low strings uh, towards the body as well um, to add to that low frequency resonance. Uh, so the theory in my head is that it's going to pick up the attack from the low strings um, from the sort of vertical alignment and the frequencies uh, from the low strings um, from the horizontal alignment. I don't know if that makes any sense. It does in my head. Uh, and then the horizontal, the, the one with the pink... Uh, tape on that's aimed at the high strings uh, so I pointed that a bit towards the neck and towards the uh, the high strings okay so what do I think so far I think we're definitely getting some separation in the high strings over to one side uh, but the low strings um, need a bit more work um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the mics actually um, I could keep the noise up. no I'm gonna I've got a pair of Four five ones, AKG four five ones, um, and I'm going to put a CK one cardioid head on the high strings. Uh, so that's the Neumanns are cardioid. So that's going to do the same sort of thing. The only difference is the CK one has got a really nice bright peak, um, sort of around ten fifteen k, I think it is. Um, so that will really help the high strings bounce out. Uh, and I've got a CK3 capsule, which is their hypercardioid one. So I'm going to try that on the low strings, which will do two things. One, being more directional, it will have more, uh, yeah, more proximity effect. So it will increase the low frequencies, which could work in our favour. Two, it's going to isolate, hopefully, those low strings a bit, uh, a bit more, and hopefully create a bit more separation. Right, so microphones have changed over to the 451s with the CK1 and CK3 capsules on. Uh, this, um, I've arranged them the same as we had the Neumanns with the, um, yeah, starting in XY and then with my headphones on I aimed the um, 
the CK1 cardioid at the high strings and then I positioned the uh, hypercardioid CK3 um, slightly aimed towards the body to get a bit more of the low end and we'll see if this has made any difference or if my efforts have been entirely futile. Uh, so without further ado I will play some uh, guitar and we'll have a listen. Right, I think now would be a good time to listen to the recordings side by side so we can hear the difference. Um, we'll listen to the horizontal Neumanns first, uh, then the vertical Neumanns, then the vertical um, AKGs, the unmatched pair. Um, we'll listen to the strummed acoustic first and then we'll switch over to the finger picked one. Uh, just one thing to bear in mind though uh, when you're listening because it will make a difference to the tone is the horizontal pair was recorded uh, about nine inches from the acoustic guitar whilst to get the um, string separation we had to get really close uh, for the vertically aligned um, it's about three inches so there's gonna be a lot more low end um, because of the proximity effect in the second two I have tried to compensate a little bit by boosting the lows of the first one but it, it's not gonna be exactly the same so just bear that in mind when you're listening but without further ado uh, let's uh, let's do just that let's listen I'm gonna put headphones on actually because uh, um, although this room is treated and it's got a really good stereo um, sound um, to get as much separation as possible, we'll take the room completely out of the equation and we'll use headphones um, just to really see what's going on. Here we go. So what were my thoughts? Well, I'd love to know your thoughts actually, um, but I was pleasantly surprised. I had a feeling this experiment would be a complete waste of time, but actually I can see myself in the, the right song, um, the right part, I could see myself using um, a vertical alignment. Um, with the strumming, it just felt to me, it just felt a bit out of balance. It felt like there was it was quite bass heavy um, in my right ear, and and all the treble was over my left. So I can't see me using see me using it um, so much for um, that situation as opposed to a standard horizontal X Y, which sounded a lot more balanced. But with the finger picking, I thought it added a really nice motion. It was subtle, but it was definitely a lot more dynamic. The horizontal X Y felt a bit static. So that kind of vertical, well, hybrid, slightly angled, um, I think worked really well with the finger picking uh, and I can see myself using that. I don't know if I'd go as far as to say this 
video has been useful? Yeah, maybe it has, maybe it has, but uh, I hope at the very least it has been intriguing and maybe even inspiring for you. Um, yeah, a few other instruments I thought it'd be fun to experiment with. Um, Leslie speaker cabinets, um, not that we get to record them very often because a lot of people use plugins, but if you do get the luxury of recording one, that's got the kind of high frequencies coming from the top, from the horn, and low frequencies from the bottom, so that could be interesting to, to sort of try. Maybe instead of just a horizontal, maybe we could just sort of tilt until we get the balance right. That's an interesting idea. Um, saxophone, again another instrument where the high frequencies come from the, the mouthpiece, the reed, the low frequencies come out more towards the bell, so that could create an interesting uh, um, feel. Maybe if we were overdubbing a part, not that we could do that, maybe we could flip it the other way, I don't know. Um, that could work with acoustic actually. We could um, we could do one part with the XY that way, so we get a sort of bass heavy on one side, and then we could flip the pan um, or flip the mics for the other one and get it the other side for another part. So we get this sort of band. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyway, just think about the instrument you're recording. Think about the vision for the song and where you want to get to and just have a lot of fun doing it, experiment, try things, and you never know what will uh, work. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks again for joining me, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, and uh, I'll see you again next time we're mucking about. Woo!